Hi guys, it's Sam here from Eggsy. Now I'm going to show you at least 10 ways of recycling things at home into pots that we can use to grow things. Some things are very simple, some things take a little bit of craft, but let's show you how I do it. I'm going to rush through this, show you each example in fast. So, first of all, let's consider an egg box. It's made of recycled cardboard or recycled paper pulp. So as long as it was buried with the plant, it could stay with it and the roots should be able to go through. As long as it didn't dry out, because then that would form a barrier for those roots. And so what we could do is fill this straight with soil and have six different chambers that we could then chop up when the plants are ready for planting on. We could sow them all in this side and when the plants are on, we could then transplant them or prick them out into other things. So we could have the tops or we could have the base. Let's look at the next egg box, plastic egg box. So this has a lid which has individual chambers and a central column which doesn't. I could fill all of this with soil in the middle and I could plant something like loose leaf lettuce or leeks that I'm going to then split up and I could then use other pots afterwards for that. Here I've got individual chambers. I could plant a seed of each different variety and use the fact it's got grooves to go in there and lift that seed out and I could then label each one differently. So I could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different plants growing in here and something in the middle. That's pretty useful. Equally, I could use it as a tray to hold the other side of it, which could be useful. So in this one, I plant in each individual chamber. I could put a hole in the bottom of each individual one here with a sharp pair of scissors. Just enough for the water to drain. And with holes in there for the water to drain through, I could then just use this as a, a tray in which to collect the water so it doesn't spill on the windowsill. So that I could water above or water into here, and the plants can get access to the water and it doesn't go everywhere. So I could use both of these trays to grow in, or one inside the other. The other option, if I hadn't have split them, I could have used it as a propagator, as a lid, to hold a bit of extra heat in there until those plants were starting to grow. And then I could have chopped it off and then used that as a tray that went underneath. Here, I've got freezer bags. Now these could be used to start seeds off, as I'll demonstrate with things like peas and beans. You can check my other videos out of how I've done that. They could be rolled down until they were just holding enough soil, so I could put soil in that and then grow in there. Or I could put a bit of soil in there, a bit of seed, water it. As a bag, I could then tie it up and let the seeds start germinating in there. Is another little thing that I've got at home, which I can use to start seeds off. This is a tea bag here. So I love my cuppa. So when I finished with it, I've just stored it to one side. I've got the bag. I've done another little video on this, just showing you how I done it. But I get the tea at the bottom, it's moist, it's held in there. I rip it open, put the seed in, put it on the side. There's a great way of starting those seeds off. Then I can plant them into other pots. I could use the vegetables themselves. So if it's got a thick skin on the outside, the water's not gonna come out. I can scoop out the middle bit and I could put that with soil and I could grow seeds in there. The thing to wear, be wary of these kinds of plants are is obviously it's gonna start decomposing over time and eventually it's gonna start smelling with that decomposition especially if it's starting to rot. But it's a good way of getting those seedlings started, take them out, plant them on somewhere else while you're making other pots. And then this could be discarded outside and fed into nature. Let's have a look what else I've got. The good old takeaway tub. Now they might be foil or they might be plastic, but why not at this moment in time make an extra use of this plastic before we end up recycling it. So this one has no holes in it. So I could, put some soil in there and I can get seeds going, but I've got to make sure that I don't overwater it. Um, or I could use one and then put another one of the same size inside it, which I've already put holes in. And then I know I've got the one underneath to catch any spare water. And the one on top is the one I've got the soil in and the plant starting. So it's a way of using my, my spare sort of takeaway tubs as I have them. Equally, the ones without holes in can be used to hold quite conveniently some of the pots that I'll show you how to make in a second. Other veg containers, these ones may have held things like grapes or might have had tomatoes in. These ones are quite lightweight plastic, 
So not very strong at carrying around, so you've got to bear that in mind, but they do come with some pre-made holes in them. So if you've got a container in which they can go inside, then they, they could be watered, they could hold the soil, let the plants grow, and the so they won't get too wet, and they will be quite useful to get things grow. This one came from mushrooms, so it's a sealed bottom, there's no holes in this one. It's a good chamber for putting other containers which do have holes in, or for putting many, many, many pots. I could fit lots in there. Equally, I could just fill this up and make sure I don't overwater it and get too sodden. But before I do, I've also noticed I've got some envelopes. So you might have an envelope, used or unused, um, and you could turn it into its own pot. All I did there was I grabbed the envelope, I pushed in the corners until it made allowed it some ability to make it some round, and I folded them in and I pushed them down on the round, and then I gave the top a trim. Now that could give me a quick container for a short period of time. Eventually the paper will get too wet or the glue where it joins might come unstuck, but that will give me starter for 10 if I don't have any containers. So whether you've got newspaper, or for like I have, old wallpaper that you haven't used, or liner that you haven't used, if you cut it into thin strips, I'll show you a couple of techniques. These are called paper potters. They come in two different sizes, the large one and the small one. You can buy these online retailers. Some of them come with one inside the other, so you can get both for the same price. Some sell individual. So if I took them, they've got lines on it. What I do is I line the, the piece of paper up with the top. I hold on the other side with my fingers. I roll it, not too tight, not too tight. If you do that, you won't be able to get it out. But I keep rolling it whilst holding the paper there. Now I'm gonna roll it away from me, not too tight again. I'm starting to release my grip a little bit until I get to the end of it. Now I'm gonna lift it up holding it. Now where I ended, this loose bit here, I'm going to push in. Now there is a trick when you're doing this. Whatever thickness piece of paper you've cut, you've got to make sure that half of it will go over the middle line. There's a dot in the middle. If I push this over, it just covers it. If it doesn't, then you're going to have to either bring it down a little bit or you're going to have to push it up a little bit. So this one was just fine. So I'm going to push the bit I finished within first, then I'm going to work my way round clockwise or anti-clockwise. The paper doesn't care. So I've done that, I've got the base, hold it down, I put it over the base and I push down onto the base. That forms a dimple in it and locks all that paper in. Now all I do is hold one end gently because obviously when it comes out it's gonna be no support and I just move the top end and it comes out and forms this beautiful little pot. So that's the small one. The large one needs a bigger piece of paper. Either that could be useful for the bigger seeds like pumpkins or beans, or it could be for sowing multiple numbers of seeds and then splitting them off later on. But not everybody has them around the house or the ability to get hold of them. So things you might also have are things like deodorant bottles. They're very useful. So we Adding a little bit of say masking tape or tape. I use masking tape because it's also it will decompose, it's less, less harmful than the sellotape. And then I've got myself a little pot made out of a deodorant bottle. So another great thing about using paper, write what kind of plant it is on, but they will eventually break down and decompose. They can therefore be planted with the plant, but the thicker the paper, the more risk you've got of it drying out and also stopping those roots going through. So if you're using newspaper and you've only got a, two loops around, you'll be fine, three or four, it might be a bit thick. If you're using things like lining paper, you either you could potentially plant it in, but what I might do is when the plant's big enough to plant out, I might chop it and peel it off and put that into, into the ground without it. So I've got a fertilizer bottle that I was using for the straw bale. So here, 
I could chop it down the bottom and have it just a base container, but actually I've got a nice long container here. So what I'm going to do, because it's a lawn food, I thought it'd be quite funny to grow a little tray of leeks in this, um, as it looks like grass. Myself a little tray. Now some of these edges might be sharp, so I can grab myself a gaffer tape, just to cover up those edges, I said another sharp. Yeah, five centimeters is what I was gonna go for. Same with the milk bottle. I could chop it out and make a grow container there. So I've got space for water to be put in here. I've got space for putting soil in this side. And I can irrigate when I take it out. I've even got a nifty little handle just to lift the plants in and out from. Well, I've got the seeds in there. It could be somewhere that I could put the label for what the seed is. Okay, so this one, it's got holes in. You could do with a base. So it's roughly fitting in there now, there's soil in there, the weight of it will hold it down and it has the ability to hold quite a bit of extra water in there. I could even put some gravel at the bottom so it doesn't need so much water, but then I've got a container so this one does not leak. So there were some fun ways of making use of things we have at home, from bags, plants, boxes, egg boxes, takeaway boxes, vegetable boxes, paper, envelopes, plastic containers that we can later recycle. There was lots of different ways in which we can use household items to help us get our plants started. I hope you found that useful and interesting. If you've got any other techniques, drop me a video or a picture in the comments and we can share these with other people. Thank you very much.